Imagine a world where more women have the time to fully explore their genius. Welcome to She Rebel Radio, the UK's podcast for women leaders and founders ready to unlearn conventional rules and lead their businesses of significance. Hailed for counter status quo ideas and a whole dose of feminine perspective, my name's Lulu Mins. I host retreats and create spaces for women leaders to explore their genius. And today I'm going to create that same space right here for you on this podcast. Welcome to episode 118 of She Rebel Radio. Avoid the pitfalls of oversharing. We are back for our four part solo summer series. It's amazing to be back here with you, and I'm going to be sharing some big questions to help you gain clarity about how it is that you can lead with greater authority and more authenticity than ever before. When the world is in a leadership crisis, I think we can agree, ladies, there's never been a more important time. And we're going to be diving into the pitfalls of oversharing today. And at the end of this series, I'm going to share with you two trainings I have coming up in September that are essentials for all women leaders and she rebels. So keep an eye out for that. And I have a surprise coming up for you in one of the other episodes. So stay tuned. And today, as I said, we're going to dive into the oversharing culture and whether that's contributing to burnout. I was feeling super exhausted at the weekend. I had a digital detox, which I haven't done admittedly for a while. And I used to do it quite religiously. I hadn't done it for a while. And it just got me thinking about this episode and this question as to how much oversharing and the oversharing culture is contributing to our exhaustion and burnout because everyone's talking about that this year and feeling it quite acutely. And I also wanted to dive into the question, are we feeling the pressure? Are you feeling the pressure to overshare as women leaders in order to sell and or gain traction in our businesses or maybe for you to gain traction in your teams? We are told to share, to share vulnerably, to be authentic these days. But where is this really taking us? As always, we like to be cutting edge of the conversation here on She Rebel Radio, counter status quo and to really kind of shift the tides and further the conversation. This is the year, is it not, that we have heard from the spare prince, that is Prince Harry, in his explosive memoir. I've not read it personally. I did watch one of the episodes on Netflix and then I thought, wow, a whole series? I haven't got the time. I'm not that interested to hear what's been going on. But, you know, he's been sharing drug use, military secrets and his sex life that, you know, I've heard a lot of bits from other people and, you know, selling his story. Some people have said he's selling his story because they're not getting the money from the royal family anymore. Is there another agenda behind it? Who knows? But the fact is Prince Harry is selling story. And from Prince Harry to people drinking on the streets, etc. I used to work with many of the homeless communities and, you know, they had stories in order to get people, to manoeuvre people, to do what it was that they needed or to get cash in some circumstances that I remember in my early 20s when I was living in London as a trainee lawyer and my friend and I nearly got mugged at a bus stop in London as somebody came over with a story that they didn't have and I'm not judging anyone's stories by the way as to whether they're truthful or not truthful, that's not what this episode's about but he had a story that they didn't have or he didn't have enough money for car parking enough cash these were you know the days when we had more cash on us and my friend who's from the country rather than from Brighton like me I had a bit more uh, I was a bit more streetwise she is a very helpful person as well it was kind of in slow motion she started getting her purse out to help this person with their story about needing cash for car parking and then all of a sudden we were surrounded by a group of people someone was demanding my bus pass and it all got very chaotic the police walked past and um you know, we were surrounded, no one really intervened or saw what was going on. But I was thinking about this story because, as I've said, from Prince Harry or to people on the streets needing money, whatever it may be, there's always a story. And we are told as business owners, 
And now I see lots of people sharing more about if you're in leadership and leading teams that we need to be sharing and selling story. And why is that? We need to look at the question of why we do that because it's very interesting and I'm not putting this in a hierarchical way that from Prince Harry to those on the streets or street drinking, we sell story, we share story and the reason we do that is to fast track relationships. Sharing story creates trust and it speeds up intimacy and that may get us to a particular result. For example, if you are in a service-based business like myself, I've always been in service-based business, then fast-tracking relationships or building no like and trust factor is even more important than it is in a product-based business because in a product-based business people are coming out with a tangible thing whereas in service-based it really is about no like and trust and moving people through that process as quickly as possible is an advantage in your business. So now we're seeing across the board, particularly on social media, but I'm also noticing it at events that people are sharing much more vulnerable, in inverted commas, stories and things about themselves and building relationship with audience. You know, we're becoming masters of this stuff. But for this episode, we're really exploring like, when is that too much? Say, for example, you're at a business event and something is being shared, which isn't actually relevant to business but yes we are all human beings running businesses etc but I'm really you know looking at now what the is the agenda behind the sharing of some of these stories and if you know me out and about town we may have had conversations about this because I've been speaking to a few other business owners about this of you know what's appropriate and what's not and that's always for us to judge with on our value system but is it contributing to burnout and are you feeling the pressure to share more than you're actually comfortable with in order to be in business or to lead your team I would love to always hear back from you on that and I've heard from a few of the marketing experts and things like that on LinkedIn that they are changing the algorithms and you can now put on LinkedIn the hashtags of the things that it is that you talk about and what you're an expert within and soon if not already you'll be getting more traction on those algorithms rather than you know sharing although I did share a picture of my cat on LinkedIn so I apologize but it was because he was sitting with my podcasting equipment and was getting excited for launching this series but I've seen so much particularly in the last year and I'm not interested in being LinkedIn police and things like that of what is okay and isn't to share but I have found it quite exhausting you know from divorce to death to you know um single teenage parenting to mental health suicide and knowing everything about everyone before I've even met them and I have some like 7,000 contacts and stuff on LinkedIn so I can't possibly have a close relationship with all of those people and when preparing this episode you know thinking about Prince Harry thinking about those people on the streets who share story in order to maybe get money or whatever it is that they need to us you know in this middle road of running businesses as solopreneurs or small medium businesses or even leading teams we're told to share story and are we actually living in an oversharing culture because young people who use social media as well are told you know to share things it makes other people feel better because we can create that connection that that's happened to them too but is it all too much because we know with social media for example and younger people have told me that sometimes they've shared things on twitter to kind of release things which is a whole thing in itself and I am going to touch on that but with social media in terms of running a business we are fighting for attention. We are fighting for algorithms and it's who can shout the loudest or who can share the most vulnerable story and who's good at doing that, you know, with the with the hook and the one-liner and is it really relevant to their businesses? And I wanted to kind of dive in a bit deeper with this episode and sharing about the difference between using versus being. 
because I think this is absolutely critical and being is what I call a feminine principle and that is a little hint about one of the She Rebel Radio trainings we have coming up in September because I have taught feminine principles in one way, shape or form since 2016. So um, it's coming up for seven years and being is a very feminine based principle. And Brené Brown talks about, you know, in her topic, one of the topics that she is an expert within is vulnerability. And she says that there is a big difference between us using vulnerability and being vulnerable. So I'm going to say that again. She says there's a big difference between us using vulnerability and being vulnerable. And I share that and link that back to because a lot of the stories we're hearing, you know, things that have happened to people in the past, this awful thing happened. So now I run my business and now I can help you, etc, etc. And is that using vulnerability or is that being vulnerable? My very good friend, Lizzie Leballestier, who's a Blue Health coach. She created Blue Health Coaching. She's been coaching people by the beach for some 15, 20 years. She's a real expert. That's one of her topics of expertise. Talks about, and we were having a conversation not that long ago. I hope you don't mind me sharing here, Lizzie. And Lizzie has an incredible She Rebel Radio episode with us. um, And it's always in our top 20, which is about how to find our purpose when using Blue space or within blue space something like that and that was a Freudian slip there but she really distinguishes between for example people saying that they are using blue space compared to being in blue space and this got me thinking about where are we using story in order to sell or get what it is that we want as opposed to being in story our story is unfolding all of the time. I have an obsession and we've interweaved and threaded some of this through She Rebel Radio with the likes of Dr. Sharon Blackie of, you know, female myth, feminine myth and mythology and how our stories as women in today's world with feminine narrative really links back to the stories and the people that came before us and that, you know, they are connected by us being in story but when we look at using story in order to get what it is that we want and I'm not criticizing or maybe I'm a little bit but I'm not saying this is not a good a good marketing practice but what I'm saying is where is the overshare and culture become too much where are we using stories and as a commodity um, something to be bought and sold as we have done for generations in terms of our time you know, we've we've um, been using our time as a commodity of something to be bought and sold instead of being in time. That Einstein said, um, "We, you are the source of time. Time is not something that's separate from us. It is us. And that's what being is all about. And being is being in the present moment with something. There is no agenda or premeditation or outcome of somewhere that you're trying to go or get to. And that, again, is a very feminine principle of unfolding as opposed to outcome orientated, where you just allow things to unfold and naturally evolve as opposed to knowing the end goal and working back from there. Um, and, And they're quite polar opposites. And I use this as a case in point in terms of using story or being in story or using vulnerability as opposed to being vulnerable. If you were at a retreat with me, um, and here's my sales pitch, our retreats for 2024 have launched for March and October next year in 2024. We only have, you know, 10 or 12 women at those retreats. We do deep work. They're really intimate. It is highly likely, although not promised, that I would share something with you at that retreat, either at the dinner table or maybe even the group setting when I'm doing some group coaching, if it's relevant to something that someone's asked or something that's come up that is far more vulnerable or me being in story than I ever would on LinkedIn or maybe standing up and talking in an event of around two or 300 people, which I'm an introvert by nature, so I much prefer to do it this way, by the way. Um, 
And, you know, and, and even here on this podcast, there is a line that I would not cross, which can feel you know which could feel easy to cross that line because when I'm sitting and recording particularly on a solo show it's just me but it could go out to you know we've had 18,000 downloads on the podcast you know it could go viral like Brené Brown said she had a vulnerability hangover when she shared her TED talk which you know went into millions very very quickly and you know she was vulnerable and that was but it was totally relevant to what it was that she was sharing whereas now are we just sharing story for for sharing sake to get the attention to get the algorithms and where is that a causing us burnout or b causing us pressure as women leaders to sell or gain traction in our business that we need to over share there is a um anthropologist called Dunbar and he had a rule called the 150 rule Um, and let's consider there might have been a great woman behind some of his idea and thought leadership as well because we're finding that out more and more that there's a woman behind a lot of this stuff that um, 150 rule that basically says and it's been tried and tested that we only have the cognitive ability and emotional bandwidth if you like to have close relationship and be in relationship and that intimate relationship that we're talking about with around 150 people you know on your Christmas card list maybe inviting to a big birthday or your wedding or something like that and if there's two of you you know as as usually follows through in a wedding there may be 300 people but any more than that aren't necessary close friends and Oxford University has undertaken a very interesting study which I've been looking at quite closely recently in terms of the work that I do with women in leadership and have done over the last eight years that successful women in business in leadership not only have like a wide network which you know so many of us in business have as I said on LinkedIn I have like some 7,000 contacts but they actually have an inner circle of women that are similar to them who really are a catalyst to them you know succeeding and taking themselves to that next level because that is the level of depth and intimacy within the relationships that are needed for us to actually kind of go somewhere with it to get somewhere with it and I thought that was interesting in terms of relating that back to the 150 rule because otherwise there's only a certain you know what that is saying that rule that there is only you know a certain amount of depth and intimacy we can have with a certain number of people we literally don't have the emotional bandwidth or cognitive ability for it to be much bigger than that and social media kind of leads us into a false sense of security thinking that we have got a bigger bandwidth and like big events that are bigger bandwidth of you know having this intimacy and that's not to say that there are not thought leaders and influencers and things like that out there but are they sharing everything with everyone or is there a line and how can you avoid the pitfalls of oversharing and feeling that pressure because I think certainly my conclusion from this episode is a it is really contributing to emotional exhaustion and burnout of hearing everything about everyone you know I know things about people and I've never met them and I don't feel like I should know that unless I'm having a glass of wine or a chat or you know um, a deep and meaningful after a yoga class I don't really want to know I consider myself to be an empath that's the work um, that's why I do the work that I do and it's the why I used to also do the work in criminal justice which burnt me out hearing everything about everyone all of the time you know um, we have to have a kind of line between it but I you know the big purpose of this episode kicking off our summer series is to share with you how you can avoid some of the pitfalls and please do share with me via email or on social media if you've been feeling that pressure to share more to gain more traction and it's not been feeling good to you so my five tips for you are number one is recognizing that oversharing can be a coping mechanism so oversharing can be a coping mechanism and I've thought about this with Prince Harry you know he's in his 30s it's a great time to go to therapy in your 30s or get coaching that goes a bit deeper um, etc because we really start to consider where it is that we've come from 
and you know how those people have impacted us and our view of the world and all of those things and someone I think it was a journalist and I, I did find it quite funny but but you know it's like the world's longest angry text his his book and I've not read it as I've said but you know we've all probably been the person who is dealing with certain things that we've experienced growing up and um you know taking it out on other people or thought it's all their fault rather than and, and sometimes maybe it is um rather than you know doing that self-reflection or working with a therapist or someone one-to-one to really process that so oversharing can be a coping mechanism and a way to process trauma the danger of that is a it's not a safe space to do it and b everyone else is going to have to process that with you which can be super, super exhausting. So recognizing that in yourself, am I oversharing as a coping mechanism? Because we also have with the Me Too movement, you know, back in, I can't even remember when that was, you know, which was great. You know, I'm a big advocate of women sharing, but, you know, some women contacted me you know, seeing something in the press where a woman was sharing about, you know, a judge in America, I can't remember his name or, or, um, you know, something that had happened to them. Oh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna out my story on social media. And I was just like, just pause a second. Is that something you know, what's the agenda here? Um, what is where are you trying to get to in order to do this? Is that the right action? Because as we said when we started this episode, you know, we're told to share because it makes other people feel better, but you've got to put yourself in the priority first. So recognize that it can be a coping mechanism and how that may be showing up for you. Number two is sharing authentic- um, authentically is very different from sharing vulnerably or being vulnerable, as we've said, as opposed to using that vulnerability. And authenticity to me simply means not compromising yourself, not compromising your values, your principles, and what it is that's important to you. So A, you need to be clear about that stuff, your values, your principles, etc. And then you need to not compromise them. Because someone may be listening to this and thinking, well, Lulu's being highly critical here on She Rebel Radio about things that I've shared, if I'm going to read between the lines of what she's saying. But it may be that that's in alignment with your value system and it's not with mine. So you have to know what that is and distinguish between authenticity and vulnerability because I feel like those two words are used frequently, intermittently, um, if that's the right word, a a crossover, and they are actually two very different things. Number three is ask yourself, is it relevant to the work and to the work that I do and my purpose? A little bit like LinkedIn putting in these algorithms. Is it relevant to that stuff? With our International Women's Day series on International Women's Day itself, we had by Erin, who um, is an influencer on Instagram. She sells amazing hair products, all naturally derived, etc. And, you know, she's got a huge amount of followers. And her episode was called Embrace Influence. And she shared with us her top tips. And one of those, which really stayed with me, was like share 10% of yourself all of it but share it well and keep that 90% back for yourself so that I thought was an absolute critical bit of advice and a golden nugget so really tie that into this episode as well number four is what's your true intention in sharing is it to get attention is it to get more algorithms or is it to really make a difference even to that one person today whether they're going to buy from you or not and really consider that. What is your intention? And maybe if you're a woman in corporate, some of this and leading a team, some of this may be relatable and some of it might not be because I feel like in corporate, they probably need to, they're still more traditional styles of business sometimes the opposite way. And they're, they're so used to sharing corporate speak and business talk and, you know, um, and values that, a quite surface level and haven't really got the depth underneath it so you know maybe you can flip some of this and still use these to not perhaps use the avoid the pitfalls of oversharing but maybe avoid the pitfalls of undersharing um, and see how you can use these steps as well 
And then the final one is to consider whether there may be a more comfortable place for you to share in. You know, in a small circle, a small group, as I said, an inner circle is very important to women in leadership in particular. It could be a retreat. You could have, you know, I have an alumni She Rebel group on Facebook. So a lot more is shared in there. If I'm doing a video in there and I used to run a bigger Facebook group years ago. But again, I would share on a different level in there than I would in my wider network or just you know random people who may be I'm sorry if you're a random person but following on my Facebook or on LinkedIn and I still feel far more comfortable sharing in smaller groups and spaces and I feel like the rule um that anthropologist Dunbar has um you know discovered about 150 people on our emotional bandwidth you know it makes other people feel safe as well as myself to share only what it is that I'm feeling fully comfortable with so I hope those tips are super helpful to you and it's been amazing to be back here with you on She Rebel thank you for listening to She Rebel Radio I've been Lulu Mins and before you go, I'd love to invite you to join me online in September for two essential women in leadership trainings, the three keys to self-actualization and the feminine leadership principles. These two trainings will support you to unleash more of your genius into the world in only the way that you can. They are essentials for all women leaders and she rebels in today's world and they will even deepen your perspective when tuning into this podcast. I'd love to see you there. Check out the show notes below.